Thank you. The first member's statement goes to the member from Beaches East York. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, a new carving by Garrett Nadi of the Seven Grandfathers' Teachings was unveiled inside the Legislative Chamber at Queen's Park. The eagle, beaver, turtle, wolf, bison, bear, and raven represent the guiding principles of love, wisdom, truth, respect, humility, honesty, and courage. They watch over us to urge us to legislate in a good way and to take legislative steps towards meaningful reconciliation, which in turn must mean working with community, including urban Indigenous communities to co-create transit that safeguards the environment and our urban wetlands and ravines wherever we can. The Friends of Smalls Creek and local community are incensed that Metrolinx is intending to clear-cut half the Smalls Creek ravine, one that is treasured by local Indigenous people, and destroy its precious wetland in the coming days because it is completely and utterly unnecessary. Engineers have outlined alternative approaches that would preserve the integrity of the ravine and wetland and save many of the ravine's mature trees. The bigger systemic issue is that Metrolinx has been designed to not engage in meaningful consultation with community. Yesterday, the Auditor General blasted the government for exactly this failure where it concerns the environment. It's time to do things differently. We can build transit and save our precious wetlands and ravines. There's no need to choose between them. The seven grandfathers' guiding principles must be central in everything we do, including building transit that doesn't destroy the environment. It's the only way that we will build Ontario in a good way for everyone who lives here. Thank you very much. The next statement goes to the member from Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This September, I was honored to attend and speak at the Intercommunity Breakfast Summit, organized by the Canadian Coptic Foundation. This summit was joined by many religious communities, including Greek Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox, Jewish, Hindu, and more. This event created a space for attendees to openly discuss and create an appropriate response towards a growing concern many of us here also share. The concern regarding the incidents of targeted attacks on churches throughout our country. According to the organizer, to date, over 68 churches of different denominations has, have been vandalized or set on fire across Canada. And I want to emphasize, this number is just this year alone. Targeted attacks against churches and places of worship are wrong and unacceptable. Such crimes and acts of hatred has no place in Ontario and Canada. Mr. Speaker, Ontario has built on the backs of Ontarians from different cultural and religious backgrounds. This is what makes Ontario unique, and this is what makes us strong. Mr. Speaker, every Canadian, regardless of their religion or denomination, has a right to feel safe when they practice their faith. Here in Ontario, let's raise more awareness towards this issue and continue to work together and stand against religious violence in all of its forms. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The next member's statement is the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. The Premier recently shared his plan to get electric vehicles built in Ontario. Unfortunately, like many of the Premier's announcements, there is no substantial plan for how the Conservatives will motivate Ontarians to buy electric vehicles. An NDP government would start by reinstating the electric vehicle charging incentive program that this government cancelled in 2018. Though the Premier calls it a millionaire's incentive, it's not millionaires buying the award-winning Chrysler Pacifica that is built in my riding of Windsor West. It's hard-working middle-class families in my community and across Ontario that are looking for a reliable, built-in Ontario vehicle. People that work in restaurants, grocery stores, healthcare, schools, auto parts manufacturing, and those at Windsor Assembly who build the Pacifica. It's the people who work hard, give back to the community, and live under constant uncertainty about their job security. Thousands of my constituents lost their auto jobs while the Premier waved them goodbye without any concrete plan to retain these jobs. Windsor Assembly lost their third shift last year, and the second shift is now in jeopardy, too. We continue to lose good-paying auto jobs to countries that offer incentives to buy electric vehicles. The Premier said he won't bring back incentives because of slow EV sales. Newsflash for the Premier, the purpose of incentives is to increase sales and usage of electric vehicles. 
By reinstating EV incentive programs and building back the charging stations his government removed, it would demonstrate a real commitment to the auto industry as our country competes to secure once in a generation investment against other countries. The Premier must immediately rethink his decision and offer incentives to promote EV sales, protect our environment, and help save thousands of jobs in my community and across the province. The next member's statement. The member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much. Uh, speaker, recently I had the opportunity to meet with Sensei Steve Arms, the director and chief instructor at Shishinkan Martial Arts, to celebrate the dojo's 10 year anniversary. Mr. Arms and his team instruct martial arts classes and teach self defense to hundreds of youth and adults across my riding of Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. But, Speaker, joining a dojo goes beyond learning self defense. They focus on developing patterns of thinking and problem solving. When speaking to the staff and students at this event, it was quite clear that a dojo's main goal is more than just teaching martial arts. As students progress through the ranks, they develop life skills which promote a strong and disciplined mindset which will remain with them for life. Speaker, such skills include service to the community and unconditional support to anyone that is in need of assistance. Sanpais also teach their students how to develop a relentless work ethic to achieve their goals. And obtaining a black belt, which is the highest honor, means you possess the leadership skills to not only defend yourself, but to also serve others around you. Speaker, I'm proud of Shishinkin Martial Arts for their commitment to helping people in my riding. The work is vital to developing future leaders in our province. I want to thank Steve once again for being a wonderful leader in our community. Your commitment to helping others is very much appreciated. Thank you very much, Speaker. <laughs> member Statements, the member for London North Centre. I recently had the honour to be at Banting House in my riding of London North Centre to mark World Diabetes Day, Dr. Banting's birthday, and the 100th anniversary of insulin, a defining moment in Canadian and world history. Along with Charles Best, John J.R. McLeod, and James Collip, Banting's team changed the world for diabetics. They changed what was a life sentence for some and a starvation diet for many more into a full life, something many of us take for granted. It's also inspiring that these visionaries understood that no one should profit from another person's ill health, selling the patent to U of T for one dollar. This is truly Canadian, that no one, regardless of their ability to pay, should be out of pocket for health care. Banting never profited from his discovery, and I believe that we must continue Banting and Best's legacy to ensure diabetes supplies and testing equipment are fully covered by the province. On May 13th this year, I was proud to vote in favour of the member from Essex's Bill 272, opening the assistive devices program to include flash glucose monitoring and continuous glucose monitoring devices. While this particular bill did not pass, it remains something everyone in this house should support for those living with diabetes. Diabetes is an expensive disease to manage and equipment and supplies should be covered. Diabetics deserve universal pharma care no matter how old they are. Too many people on ODSP live under the poverty line, on the brink of financial ruin, simply trying to manage their diabetes. This is wrong, and this is not Banting's dream. Banting believed insulin belongs to the world, and I couldn't agree more. I'd like to thank Banting House's curator, Grant Maltman, as well as the donors, sponsors, visitors, and volunteers for maintaining the flame of hope in Banting's legacy. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Saturday, last Saturday, I heard about uh, the Senator Jose Forrest Nissing, who passed away recently. She was a Franco-Ontarian. She defended the interests of the Franco-Ontarian community. In the name of all the Franco-Ontarians and all my all the people of my writing, I would like to express my sincere condolences to her family. We are stronger because of her. Singh died of complications of COVID-19. She had received two doses of the COVID-19 vaccine earlier this year, but had an autoimmune disease that made her particularly vulnerable to the virus. Mr. Speaker, despite how far we've come, people continue to get sick and sadly die. And Senator Farhaneh Singh's death is a very real reminder of the importance that we all get vaccinated to protect ourselves, to protect others, but most importantly, to protect people like Jose, the most vulnerable, who cannot protect themselves. They are counting on us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Friday, November 19th, marked Gurpur, the 552nd birth anniversary of Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Gurpur is a holy and religious holiday for members of the Sikh community, including myself. It is celebrated as the birth of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the creator and founder of Sikhism. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji is a renowned philosopher who traveled the world teaching the three pillars of Sikhism. These three principles are Nam Japna, remembering God through meditation, Kirtkarni, earning an honest living, and Van Shakna, sharing with the needy. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji traveled the globe on foot with the mission of uniting the world through love and kindness. All of his teachings and lessons contributed to the creation of Sri Guru Granth Sahib, which is a central holy religious scripture in Sikhi. Through you, Speaker, I would like to highlight Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji's selfless and kind nature. Gurpurup is celebrated to honor his life, achievements, and most importantly, his legacy. The holiest day of the year for Sikhs is typically celebrated through visiting the Gurdwara and partaking in Seva, which is an act of selfless service that is performed without any expectation of result or reward for, 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 for performing it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. statements, the member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand today to follow up on a commitment I made to honour Nurse this week. Decision makers in this chamber and across Ontario have expressed genuine gratitude to the experience of our frontline healthcare workers throughout the pandemic. While I recognize these expressions are genuine, I also see through the lens as a former frontline healthcare worker. Next spring, Ontario will be hosting an election, and the frontline health care workers that have kept us safe deserve more than to be treated as political tokens. More than being labelled heroes, but see no action or delayed action on health care issues. So, the last few weeks, I have reached out to most of the frontline health care organizations in Niagara. Simply, they want to push for meaningful action in this legislature today. That means hospital funding and resource when nurses need them so they feel safe. But at the core, show them that you want to fix the human resource crisis in health care today. Do it by enacting a policy that hires more nurses and PSWs to reduce, reduce burnout and increase recruitment today not just commitments that are too little and stretch too far in the future. That means removing Bill 124 that caps earnings below inflation to increase in retention. Across Niagara, we are launching a petition where we will get hundreds, hundreds of frontline health care workers to join in and say the same thing. Just because there's an election coming up, this does not mean they need to settle for election promises. When it comes to health care, our true heroes deserve real action today. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Halliburton Court Lakes Broad. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm pleased to rise today to recognize and celebrate the village of Omimi's bicentennial. 200 years ago, in 1821, Omimi was founded by the Cottingham family who immigrated to Upper Canada from Ireland. In the early 1800s, after the Cottingham family established a grist and sawmill on Pigeon River, a village grew around the mill. More than a decade later, in 1835, the village was named Williamstown and later renamed Metcalf in the 1840s and finally Omimi in 1857. The name Omimi was based on a Mississauga word meaning pigeon. The construction of a railway in 1857 fostered the growth of the community, which became a thriving shipping point for timber and grain. In the late 1800s, Omimi had become a central hub with a grist mill, two sawmills, a tannery, a foundry, a shingle mill, a cloth mill, three churches, four hotels, an elementary and secondary school, and a newspaper. Today, Omimi remains a reflection of the bustling hub it was with beautiful historic buildings and community landmarks. Small towns like Omimi are filled with history and character and continue to remind us of the importance of our past and show us how communities are capable of growing and adapting to the changing economic need. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and happy anniversary to Omimi.
Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I'm very